What's up is down, what's left is right. A legionnaire, isn't that what they had in the Italian job? So you'll have heard me say, is this the coach that was used in the Italian job? Well, it's a 1965 Bedford Val Harrington with Legionnaire bodywork. And if it looks familiar, it is because it was a Harrington Legionnaire that was used in the film. Now, it's a real rarity and I've never seen one before. And the only one I've ever seen was in the film itself. And I knew they were rare and I thought there was only about six left. But it appears that this is the only one left on the road. So is this the bus that was used in the film? Well, it's not the actual one used, but it is the same make and model as that used. But either way, I think it's just as special. And um, to start with, it's a survivor and what a lovely example it is. But what happened to the Italian job bus? Well, more about that later. But first of all, let's concentrate on this one. Built in 1965, uh, it entered service and was delivered new to Heaps Tours of Leeds. Um, it was later acquired by Kenzie's in 2002 and it was rebuilt. And what a fantastic job they made of it. I mean, I've seen a few vintage coaches, some better than others, but this stands out way above them all. It, it's got a beautiful paint job and the interior is so period with its leopard design seat upholstery. Absolutely fantastic. And a great example of what a new coach of that period was like. I was surprised to see it's only a 44 seater. Uh, different times, I suppose, whereas now you expect 50 plus. Um, and to give you a bit more background, the Bedford Val was a coach chassis, um, which was unusual because it had six wheels and it had two steering axles at the front. It was built with a number of bodies from coach builders such as Jupel, Plaxton, Harrington and Yates. However, as I said earlier, the Harrington Legionnaire gained recognition through its use in the Italian job. They were built by Thomas Harrington Limited in Hove, Sussex, between 1963 and 1965. And I understand only 58 were ever built. Harrington had been a coach builder since 1897 and it was in 1930 that they moved to a purpose-built art deco factory in Hove and they remained there until they closed in 1966. Another interesting fact for you, when the Sunbeam Alpine was introduced in 1959, some people complained to dealers that there wasn't a hard top coupe version like rival manufacturers. And this is where Harrington step in because they were also a root dealer and they had experience of working with glass fibre. And they produced the Harrington Alpine, which was sold through selected routes dealerships. In 1961, one was prepared for competition at Le Mans, and this led to an addition being built to commemorate its achievement. Most of the Harrington Alpines built were right hand drive, and they were made for the home market, whereas most of the 250 Le Mans versions were sold in America. So what did happen to the Italian job bus after filming? Delivered new in 1964 to Batten Coaches of London, it was registered ALR 453B. Filming began in Turin in 1968, but at what point the coach was acquired is unclear, but it's known that it was registered to Paramount Films for the duration of filming. Now, when making a movie, it's not uncommon to have more than one of each type of vehicle because you never know what might happen during filming. Or it may be that they need to be prepared for different scenes. Now, 16 minis were needed for the film. However, there was only ever one coach used. It was modified for filming with, of course, the addition of rear opening doors and a reinforced bulkhead behind the driver's seat to allow the cars to be driven into the bus safely. You should also bear in mind that the coach was only 11 meters long. So if you consider the fact that there was three minis to go in the back, which were roughly about 10 feet long, didn't leave a lot of space. So the um, bulkhead modification was essential. After the film was released in 1969, the bus had its rear doors welded shut and it was converted back to a coach by William Marshall of Blackpool 
and it was in operation as a passenger vehicle in Blackpool until 1971, when ownership passed to Edmund Birch, who operated it as Wendy's Coaches in Liverpool. It was next acquired by dealer Andrew Drummond of Hart Hill, Scotland, and he sold it to James Methin in Kirinmuir, Scotland, and he painted it in a yellow and white livery. It was used as a passenger vehicle and often used as a school bus from 1973 to 1979, and it could be seen on a daily basis in the town in the 1970s, taking children to school from the garage at Park End. Apparently inside you could still see the riveted seam down the back where the doors were welded shut and it was also believed that the bus still had welded fixing points under the chassis where the cables held it from going over the cliff. In 1979 ownership passed to Archie Cromer of Bridge Garage and Strother. The bus was then gutted and had all 36 seats removed and it was converted as in the film to be used as a transporter for his Formula Ford racing car. He negotiated with the Crow's Nest Hotel for some sponsorship and the bus was painted white and had the Crow's Nest logo on the side. In 1983, the next owner, Raymond Gatherham, put the bus to use as a horse box. And in 1985, the next owner, motorbike and sidecar champion Bill Davy, used it as a transporter for his motorcycle and sidecar. Apparently, Mr Davy bought the bus for £600 and he knew it was used in the Italian job but it was just considered as a working vehicle to him. He had a sign writer from Fife write the Italian job on the front of the bus in small italics. He took it to the Isle of Man a few times for the sidecar TT, but it kept breaking down, so he sold it to a local lad for £350. It was taken off the road in 1987, and it was still decorated in the colours of Strath Speed Racing, when unfortunately it was scrapped in 1990, by Burnside Motors in Leven, Fife. Throughout its history in Scotland, the bus's association with the Italian job was always very well known, even when it was broken up. However, of course, in those days, people didn't realise the value of film props as we do now, but its memory lives on.